Have you ever had to overexpose your background in your footage just to expose your subject correctly? You might try fixing it with a mask in post, and although it's better, it's not perfect. But when you light it correctly and get it right in camera, it looks way better. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. We're going to look at two specific scenarios and how to get the look in camera versus what it would look like if you attempted to. And I can already hear all of the editors around the world crying out in frustration when I say this, fix it in post. <laughs> fix it in post, fix it in post. Well, I live in my office. Whew, I think I have a little PTSD. The first scenario is one where we have the overexposed background with a dark subject. The second scenario is more of a stylized lighting choice where we purposely light the scene to have a dark background. Now let's talk about the light that I'm using because that's what makes it possible to shoot this outdoors with ease. I'm using the Surui C60X handheld pocket light that Surui sent me to try out, which is a super bright 60 watt light about the same size as a camera body. You can adjust the color temperature from 2500 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin and the brightness from 1 to 100 using the dial on the side. It's also got some built-in effects like camera flashes, lightning, fire and more, which is a fun feature if you need some creative lighting. The built-in battery lets you go cable-free and you get about 45 minutes at 100% brightness. You can pair it with Surui's H99 Pro battery grip, which will add another hour and a half or so to your shooting time at full power. I've hooked the light up to this small little softbox, which takes seconds to set up, and that is my lighting setup for the examples in this video. It's insanely powerful for such a small light, and its portability makes it great for outdoor shooting. I'll leave a link to it down below if you'd like to check it out. Scenario number one, overexposed background. In this scenario, you'll want to set your camera's exposure to a good brightness level for the background. You'll adjust the brightness until you have a nice natural balance between the subject and the background. I couldn't be in the frame to adjust the brightness at the same time, so I just jumped back and forth a few times until I found a brightness level that worked for the shot. I also set my color temperature to 5500 Kelvin to match the daylight white balance I had set on my Sony ZV-E1. That's all there really is to it. For comparison's sake, if I took the shot with no lighting on location into Final Cut Pro and I added a color wheel adjustment in an attempt to lower the exposure of the background, I could first click on the mask icon up here and add a magnetic mask and I'll select the subject and I'll hit analyze. Now that my mask has been tracked, I can hit done and I can choose the inside and outside of the mask here to adjust either the subject or the background. So let's start with the outside and maybe I'll drop the highlights down here to reduce the exposure. I can even bring it down globally, maybe even bring the midtones down even further. Get the highlights are not quite right. And then I can turn that off and back on again so you can see the difference that makes. The mask isn't perfect, so I might just adjust the feathering here to soften these edges. That looks a little more natural. And again, it might look a little better, but it's far from perfect. If you look at a side-by-side -side comparison, you'll notice that the background with the shot that has lighting on location looks much better. In scenario number two, I'm going to blast the Surui C60X at full brightness. And what that allows me to do is lower the exposure in camera until the subject, me, is correctly exposed. And by doing that, by lowering the overall exposure in the shot, I'm also forcing the background to be exposed much darker. Now, this is a great way to create that separation between subject and foreground, especially when shooting outdoors and if you're doing outdoor interviews. Look at how bright that background is and how I'm able to force it to be much darker by introducing that light and getting the exposure right in camera. Hopefully this video demonstrates the importance of lighting correctly on location, but also that you do have some wiggle room if you need to fix things in post. Ugh, kidding me, kidding me. I know, I know, getting things right in camera is always better and you don't want to have to rely on fixing things in post. Here are another 10 common beginner video editing mistakes that you'll also want to avoid. So go ahead and watch that next and I'll see you in the next video. <sighs> this is probably not even usable. <laughs>